مرحبا بالجميع وشكرا لانضمامكم الى Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today in this webinar entitled Green Microfinance in the Arab World. Level of Development, Global Practices and Strategic Outlook. Let me start first with logistics to raise questions during this webinar. I kindly ask you to use the chat box to the right side of your Zoom. To make sure that the facilitator Sahar sees your chat, please send your question to everyone. I kindly ask you to keep your camera off to guarantee your privacy and to avoid issues with the broadband. The microphones will also be muted throughout the entire webinar. Please note that the recording will be sent to all the attendees and all those who have registered via email. Allow me to give the floor to Sahar al Tibi, the facilitator and advisor to the FinDev Gateway. Sahar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eddie. Welcome again, everyone. Allow me to welcome you in the first webinar that we organize in 2023. I hope that you are having a good start of the year. Allow me to welcome the main speakers who have joined us today. We have with us Mrs. Natalia Realp Cario, the CEO of Hedera Sustainable Solutions. We also have with us Taha Iskandar, head of microfinance at Al Quraimi Islamic Microfinance Bank in Yemen. In addition to Mrs. Abir Abwa, business development and marketing manager at the Tamwilcom company in Jordan. Today's discussion focuses on green microfinance in the Middle East and North Africa. We will briefly start with the results of the survey, the outcomes of the survey conducted in November 2022, a survey on the green microfinance and its situation. The survey was conducted by the Hedera Sustainable Solutions funded by the Sanad Fund. The different speakers will shed light on microfinance, on green microfinance in their Arab countries. And in specific, they would highlight the current practices, the strategies, future strategies that seek to enhance the capacity of uh, beneficiaries to be more resilient to climate change and ensure that they better benefit from different initiatives and solutions. We will also end this discussion after our deliberations on the outcomes and the analysis with, with the lessons learned, lessons learned on how to expand green microfinance while focusing on solutions and products for the future. Allow me now to give the floor to Mrs. Natalia to start with her presentation on the outcomes of the survey, in which she will also share very valuable information with all of us. And then uh, Taha and Abir will also be sharing with us their practical experiences from their own countries and experiences. Thank you, Natalia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, FinDev Gateway, for organizing this webinar and having with us um, the Arabic audience microfinance sector to listen to these um, results on the study of green inclusive finance. So we will have a very interactive session. We will be discussing with Tahar and Abir about their work and showing uh, you as well the results of the study. We have launched the report in the Sanabel conference in Cairo in November. And then we had a presentation webinar for the European microfinance sector in mid-December, together with my co-author, Alexander Revyakin, independent consultant for Finance in Motion. And now very pleased to share with you uh, today more in detail the results looking also at the plans and outlook for the region. 
So where are we at stake? What are we um, here discussing about? We have conducted this survey, uh, SANAD, the Technical Assistance Funds, but very interesting to know what is the status, the landscape of green inclusive finance in the region in order to better support uh, the institutions and also get participation from further stakeholders. This survey um, that was digitized by EDERA, we have gathered participation of more than 42 organizations, the main microfinance institutions across the region, from Palestinian territories, Lebanon, Jordan, Yemen, Morocco, Tunisia, Syria, and Egypt. The logos and uh, companies participating are here, and we thank all of them and welcome also. Thank you for being today, participating, looking at their results. Then next one, we have um, this survey was conducted and framed in the context of the understanding of what is in green inclusive finance. In the next slide, you will see the structure of uh, or what is the, um, the axis of action that we were looking at. How is the definition of environmental strategy? identification of environmental risk and opportunities, how is the management of those environmental risk and opportunities, and finally, uh, the supply of the green products and services, which translate in the tool of the green index. As well, if you um, do another click, this tool is aligned uh, with the um, with the new or the new dimension, dimension seven, of the Universal Standards for Social and Environmental Performance Management from CERIS and SPTF, which has been co-developed together with the Green Inclusive and Climate Smart Finance Action Group of the European Macrofinance Platform. If you do another click, then it will it will come the, um, the image. Yeah, yes, uh, another, another, yeah. And here we have, this is the green index uh, 3.0, which is aligned to the, another click. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for your messages. Um, to the Universal Standards for Social and Environmental Ma uh, Performance Management. So this, um, this survey, what we wanted uh, to see and um, is, like it was a broad of aspects, considering what is the dedicated microfinance products, click. Um, also, we wanted to understand, yeah, if you if you do more clicks, then the animation will go on the slides. We had a look to the dedicated green microfinance products. What is the status of uh, whether institutions are offering clean energy, wash, so sustainable agriculture, index insurance, nature-based solutions, clean transportation. Also, what is the level of understanding the client's needs and uh, the environmental performance? Now, if, they, if institutions know, know the different tools or are using some of them, and also how is the status of partnerships? Whether do, do they work together with networks, with local entities, the TA support, and above all, to understand what are the challenges that they have and what are they currently doing in terms of the different access of action. And for this, before going into detail with the results, I want to give the floor now to Taha to tell us about um, what is like what uh, what is the status of the work that Al Qurami Bank is doing in, in, in green inclusive finance. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Natalia. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Ahlan bil jami. Thank you very much, Natalia. Peace be upon you and welcome everyone. I would like to share with you the experience of Al Quraimi uh, Bank and our experience in the solar panels and photovoltaic energy. We had a d department focusing on solar energy in our bank. The purpose was to develop new products and to target new clients and attract more clients from 2019 until the end of 2022. We have spent 
the amount shown in front of you on the uh, screen around 21 million we had different products such as agricultural funding for uh, farmers and agricultural the agricultural sector as well as uh, small solar kits for households where the uh, solar uh, power would only uh, be around uh, one to two units we also had a targeted product for uh, factories and major hotels. They are more than 104 major uh, hotels or companies amounting to more than $1.3 million. And this was a hybrid uh, product. You may know that Yemen is undergoing a severe war and unfortunately there is no electricity available in the country that had a negative impact on farmers and that is why we had this major need for farmers to provide them with alternative energy to replace the public or either the private electricity provided by either by the state or by the power generators this was an important opportunity for our bank and for other banks and other finance institutions in yemen to uh, work in alternative products targeting solar energy Moreover, in our country, we we targeted farmers with this alternative form of energy, which was a major opportunity. We also had an issue with the fuel and the fuel uh, byproducts, especially in the rural areas and in marginalized areas. Farmers and project owners sometimes required fuel and gasoline to operate their power generators but that was also an alternative especially given the high cost of such fuel byproducts this has helped us as a finance institution and has helped other banks to try and innovate in products that could ensure sustainability green energy has been very beneficial for us in yemen now we have alternative uh, energy that is also more sustainable. That is the experience of Al Quraimi Bank. We've had three pr different products uh, throughout those years, and the numbers are again in the chart in front of you. Thank you very much. If you allow me now, I would like to hand over to Abir to see if she has anything else to add. The floor is yours. Thank, thank you. you very much, Taha. Allow me first and foremost to thank the FinDev Gateway for giving us this opportunity to talk about an important subject. I also want to thank all the participants for attending. I will be sharing with you the experience of Tamwilcom as a company, as a company working uh, on green microfinance. We started launching uh, initiatives at the workspace these initiatives started with the strategies of uh, the higher administration. These are initiatives focusing on green microfinance. The purpose was also to provide better services to clients. Amongst our main priorities, we wanted to highlight the values of green microfinance for instance, uh, environmental responsibility is one of our main uh, priorities. And that is why we started using lead lighting, recycling paper, and that, that strategy has also helped us digitize the work to uh, reduce the use of paper. Uh, automization and digitalization has helped us a lot reduce the numbers of papers used and that also had a positive impact on our other environmental initiatives at the same time we conducted studies for the different projects that we wanted to fund the for the smes for the uh, smes for the enterprises and the businesses to study any adverse impact of those projects from both an environmental and social aspect for instance we assess the risks and we categorize a project such as A is a high risk, B is a medium risk, and C is a low risk project. And in case we have a high risk project, usually we do not provide any funding for such A uh, risk projects. 
If they are a medium risk project, then we conduct further studies to understand such projects more to see whether they truly have any adverse impacts on both the social and the environmental levels. In case we have a C risk level, the funding will be dispersed based on uh, studies as well. We are currently providing microfinance to different projects, but not as a specialized product. And I think that we will explain this more when we talk about our plan for the upcoming years. Let's go back to Natalia again. We would like to listen to the outcomes of the questionnaire. Thank you. Thank you, Tahar and Abir. And as you see, the different actions that they are conducting at their institutions are very diverse. So um, uh, we will see what else our institutions doing. So in this study, we had um, from the 42 institutions that participated, uh, we have this overview of um, basic, basic information from the institutions. What is the age of the institutions? We um, divided them in established more than 20 years uh, since foundation, mature from 10 to 20, and young less than 10 years um, since foundation. And then in clients, we have small institutions with up to 20,000 uh, clients. Um, yeah small institutions with less than 5,000 5, clients and larger with uh, 22, 100,000 clients and um, good distribution also with very, with larger institutions. So and this is important information as you will see later, uh, what are the results or the differentiation between the results from established and mature microfinance institutions also compared to the young ones. Next, please. So the approach that we have uh, for this for the survey and also for the analysis on, of in of the information, we have developed at the data sustainable solutions the framework that it's called Green Microfinance Penetration Framework, which can look to um, three access of um, or three dimensions to understand how, what is happening in the region. As we said, um, we have uh, taken the basics of the Green Index 3.0 and the Universal Standards for Social and Environmental Performance Management also um, uh, have into consideration the approach that has um, CFI in regards to green inclusive finance. And for this case, uh, we have we have taken these three dimensions in order to understand that there is there are actions that depend directly from the institution, such as the execution of an environmental strategy, the implementation of risk management uh, practices, as well as the offer of financial and non-financial services. But there are other um, other indicators or other. Um, other another context which depends on the environment, whether not in regards to the regulation, regulations, um, regional partnerships or programs that are there in place, as well as uh, climate challenges or governmental challenges that institutions have, and then see um, despite of of these challenges how is the implementation of green inclusive finance in the country. So in each of these dimensions, we have um, an evaluation from C from known up to high or beginner up to advanced. And this is evaluating each of the countries. In the report, in the annex, you will have an overview, a detailed overview country by country. What is that, um, what is that performance? And as we said, we are covering most of the institutions in this study. So it will be very interesting for you in your country to see uh, what are the results. Now let's have a look to the global ones. If you go to the next slide, we have an overview of the results of uh, the different countries. And um, here, for instance, um, giving you uh, a sense of what we have found. For instance, in terms of enabling environment, and there are laws or uh, regulations in 
Tunisia, in Morocco, also in Yemen, that are incentivizing institutions to take action in how to protect the environment, how to, um, or doing, or supporting more green businesses, that it's uh, rather larger than in other countries, in Syria or Lebanon or Egypt, although in Egypt and Jordan are now working uh, from central banks and from the personal interviews that we have had, they are already working in, a, in developing a strategy for supporting the microfinance sector as well as the commercial uh, banking sector in order to develop green, green finance programs. Um, in terms of offer, uh, although like in Syria, it was only one institution that definitely was depending or surviving in um, green products and also offering these technologies. Uh, we have a um, larger offer in Yemen, in Morocco, and in Palestine compared to the one found in Tunisia or in Lebanon. Although in Tunisia, uh, we have some exemplary microfinance institutions already with advanced programs. Now we have, let's, let's go an overview through the different um, levels of action. So in the next slide, we're going to talk about what is the environmental strategy. As we have here participants joining today that have participated already at the conference um, in Sanibel, as well as the, in the European Microfinance um, Platform webinar, we will focus here on what are the plans from that we have seen from the microfinance institutions. So first, it, impressive the results to have to see almost 40 percent of the institutions already with concepts um, or with with um, incorporated environmental protection concepts incorporated in their strategic plan. We see institutions already with a person or a committee that are in charge of managing all these environmental topics as well reporting internally with their board and investors on this um, on their actions and rather very few that are doing so externally. However, here in, in orange, you see uh, the amount of microfinance institutions that although they are not doing this, they are planning to. And we are very also glad to see that um, through this survey and this awareness raising activities that we are doing from conferences, webinars, uh, workshops, we are uh, seeing that institutions are even more interested in uh, having in developing their strategy, in reporting internally and also externally their results and gathering teams within their institution in charge of moving this uh, strategic for the strategy forward. Then the next one on environmental risks. What we have seen is um, not that many institutions are doing uh, or implementing activities related to risk management, as you as you see, like two thirds of them are not doing them. Um, however, the examples as what we have heard from Abir in time will come, we see that institutions that are already conducting activities, they are uh, analyzing what are the environmental risks of loan applications, doing categorization of the loan according to the environmental risk assessment, also uh, training the staff on practices on how to reduce or avoid negative impacts on the environment, also doing market and demand assessment to understand what is the access to basic needs and um, understanding that there are like different types of activities, whether within the institution, with the clients or with the staff in order to enhance or to improve those results. The next one, we see in terms of the offer, uh, we, have, we have seen that, the offer is rather large in terms of uh, green or green practices, not only in um, sustainable sustainable agriculture, but also in energy. We have uh, we have seen sustainable practices for crop production, livestock management, water management, soil management, and they say that even not the the main barriers is that they need more support from the investors. There is a lack of collaboration but mainly are from established and mature microfinance institutions rather than from young microfinance institutions. So those that are already 
more mature in the market, they have already more experience and see that um, they require also more support from their um, current investors. In the next one, in terms of the households and businesses, we have um, in the next slide, we, wa we want to show you the types of um, products that the institutions are offering. We see financing of renewable energy technologies, also financing of energy efficiency measures, um, rather low in lower scale to clean drinking water solutions and waste management, cleaner transportation, sanitation facilities, and efficient and clean biomass stoves. What we see is that even if the institutions were saying that the main challenges that they have are in terms of water access and energy access, the, the development of the financial products for energy is much larger than for drinking water or for solutions for water management. So here there is a, there is a potential market to address for microfinance institutions. And while the main barriers were um, still in, in this, um, pointing out to have more support from investors and also from um, support from the government, there is, a, there is a demand still to develop. So, and here the lack of demand, whether it, well, you can analyze it in both ways, whether you have, whether there is a demand for the financial product, although the conditions and um, context, as Tahar was saying, no, there is no electricity at all, or there is there is continuous um, outages, or prices are very high. Then how is how these challenges in in terms of the access to the basic service is converted into demand for the financial product is something that um, still needs to be further developed. Whether offering better conditions for the financial product or uh, having better negotiations with suppliers, also access to the different technologies and understanding better the market with market assessment studies. So the results not given, given here, um, like with this overview of environmental strategy, of the risk management, and also in terms of products for sustainable agriculture and for energy, um, in the next slide, what we suggest and, and what we have seen is that um, established and mature microfinance institutions in the region are more advanced in their implementation of green inclusive finance than the young ones. That means that not there is um, institutions are moving uh, with a business perspective. Institutions that are larger are um, capable of doing this um, of doing this uh, portfolio diversification. And, um, and institutions are also pointing that, or yeah, asking that they need more support from their investors and also doing more partnerships with stakeholders to promote sustainable practice in agriculture. What, while they were filling out the survey, mo some institutions were also giving us feedback. We didn't know that these were considered sustainable practices. We um, or we are financing some of them, but we are not tracking them properly because we don't have the, the taxonomy or the tools for doing this data collection. Or other institutions saying we we know that these are the client these are the needs of our clients. We know the practices that they are doing. We know that these have some consequences in the future, but we need more specialized support from agronomists, from scientists that can guide in how to um, train our staff and also train the clients to adopt other practices. So here we have some, some work to do. And the next um, and the last result, not last result, but um, just to, to, to bring together this, uh, this section of presenting first results of the, of the study, uh, I wanted to um, reflect on them, that most institutions were mentioning that they don't know if there is a regulation or governmental program at all fostering sustainability in their countries. And we see responses 
like very diverse in, for instance, in Yemen or in Tunisia or as well in Morocco, where or in or even in Egypt, where there is already some guidance or some work from the regulators and supervisors, but not all institutions are aware of them, um, or other, you know, or in other countries where the microfinance institutions were pointing out what uh, regulators were or could do, but still are waiting for these actions to take place. So I um, Joanna Neiman from AFI that worked directly with um, policymakers, with regulators. She presented in, a, in FinTech Wet Gateway four actions that policymakers can do, promotion, provision, protection, prevention, the four Ps um, for, fostering, for further fostering green inclusive finance. Promotion, these type of events are great, um, are, are very good activities, conducting surveys, coordinating actions, in provision, having more lending policies, refinancing facilities, discounting, discounted lending rates, in protection, targeting uh, agricultural insurance products, or having a look to credit guarantee schemes, and in prevention, how to um, put environmental and social risk management guidelines for the microfinance institutions. And we will add to this um, four Ps, the, the last one, practice, where um, by enabling a sandbox for microfinance institutions to test products, to see what could be the best conditions for them to offer to their clients in the, um, in the special, yeah, with the special conditions that institutions have, this can help um, institutions to further develop uh, green inclusive finance in their local markets. So we have had a look to the different um, to these different results, and considering the challenges and plans, we want to listen to Al Qurami Bank and also to Tam Welcome. What are the challenges that they are facing, and what comes next and plans you know in 2023 and beyond? Uh, it is true that there are opportunities uh, in the green funding or at the solar energy fields, but uh, we still face challenges, in particular in Arab countries, because we do not have real control on the quality of the uh, solar uh, systems. In Yemen, in uh, 2016 or 2017, the uh, solar energy uh, when it comes to households and SMEs uh, uh, used to be uh, provided with a solar system and batteries, while the batteries in Yemen were not of uh, a very good quality and they were not able to match the specifications which affected the solar quality and it tremendously affected our market uh, in Yemen. I mean, the, the people were trying to look for other solutions. Uh, but for example, with regard to the agricultural uh, funding, the systems were not battery based. Uh, therefore, uh, they were able to attract more uh, clients. It, it is because uh, those systems didn't choose to depend on batteries. I mean, the batteries were one of the reasons uh, behind uh, the uh, uh, hesitance and reluctance of uh, clients uh, when asked to, to use the solar systems. So it's very important to really to control and supervise the solar uh, production equipment. So they should have a good quality and meet the requirements and specifications in order really to make sure that the solar um, uh, energy is an alternative energy resource. We have also um, some kind of uh, weak uh, knowledge uh, at the level of the clients, uh, uh, the uh, uh, population's uh, rumors affect uh, the uh, society. And when you have a product uh, that uh, enjoys a good reputation, then a lot of people are attracted and uh, are pushed to buying such uh, products. While if it's not the case, uh, there is no sustainability. With regard to the products that we try to target, the agricultural uh, products in particular, and uh, the um, uh, major and medium-sized enterprises, 
um, because the clients used to rely on the experience of others. They wanted to imitate others in order to ensure continuity and sustainability. And that's one of the challenges. We tried to uh, launch uh, success uh, uh, stories and experiments because we wanted really uh, to um, make it clear to everyone that the solar energy is an alternative reliable resource so the solar the energy and the green uh, energy um, in yemen uh, doesn't uh, enjoy uh, a big experience we don't have a lot of experts we needed some time for uh, the clients and the experts to know how uh, to make it work in order to achieve energy that uh, can turn out to be useful those are the challenges that we were faced with uh, at the kuraimi bank in yemen mm -hmm. It is true that uh, we were faced with challenges, but we've done our best to create solutions that would help us overcome our challenges. Uh, we uh, still uh, do uh, the needed work and the funding that we provide to solar systems is still available and we always uh, seek uh, new products. Under our future plans, we think of uh, having um, solar uh, energy providers and suppliers on board. So uh, our objective is to have a small number of uh, suppliers who provide good quality supplies because we provide funds and we always want to make sure that the person who uh, gets uh, funding for the solar system would get uh, a quality solar system because if uh, there are issues with that, that would affect us and would affect our portfolio. We always make sure to have a list of uh, uh, reliable and trustworthy suppliers who have uh, reliable supplies um, that uh, meet the um, specifications. We also try to create uh, new products. We always try to have uh, new products and goods uh, when it comes to green energy. We create our products in order to gain a wider terrain in the market and target new sectors. That's all what I wanted to add uh, with regard to the challenges and future plans. So that's what we are aiming for at Al Karaymi Bank. Kabir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taha. One of the challenges um, is a lot of challenges were mentioned by Taha, and that helps. Uh, uh, have uh, uh, new opportunities. And that's why here we have uh, three uh, different axes. Uh, first, uh, to officialize the uh, ecological strategy. In 2022, uh, the Green Index uh, assessment was uh, conducted in cooperation with Natalia. And it turned out that we have a lot of initiatives and uh, a lot of environmental systems are being applied. However, they're not well oriented because we do not have a, a targeting um, strategy. And I hope that in the near future, we will be able to establish a, a recognized uh, ecological strategy so that all our initiatives would work on achieving the strategy under products and services. We've already heard the uh, challenges from my colleague Taha, heard about challenges. Uh, and uh, the challenges include the lack of uh, confidence and technical support uh, to the uh, green uh, product supply. So with the development of uh, the, uh, the welcome uh, green product, we will be uh, aiming at partnering with uh, green application services providers for a good application. In addition, we will work on raising awareness amongst the clients and increasing their knowledge on uh, the uh, green products. The, our uh, third axis or pillar is the workplace. Uh, we already said that we apply several um, environmental or ecological strategies, but we will be working on raising awareness amongst the employees when it comes to the ecological strategy. And we will work on improving the uh, work procedure so that they meet the, uh, and fulfill uh, the ecological strategy. And I would like also to speak about uh, something else and the regulatory uh, framework, having a, a regulator uh, 
take care of the green funding. But I would like to say that in Jordan, the uh, Jordania Central Bank started preparing for the launching of uh, the green funding strategy with the microfinance uh, institutions, with, with the banks, uh, the private sector, and the governmental entities. And it's also worth mentioning that the local uh, network, Tanmia, is organizing meetings between uh, the uh, uh, small um, uh, green funding uh, with the renewable energy uh, governmental department and i would like to say that uh, the uh, uh, e uh, c or b um the european bank together with the european union uh, the uh, green climate fund had launched uh, the uh, um, green economy initiative in Jordan. Another thing on challenges with regard to launching uh, the green uh, financing in Jordan. Uh, I agree with Taha uh, when it comes to the uh, confidence, the knowledge uh, on uh, the green applications. And uh, the green applications uh, prices are somehow uh, high in the beginning and it's difficult to assess the long-term return on investment because the return on investment uh, is uh, to be assessed uh, on the long run. That is why in the early beginning, in the early uh, phase, um, we uh, witnessed high uh, prices. Um, there is also very um, intense uh, competitiveness uh, between the local banks and the service providers themselves because uh, they also work on uh, this applications. Uh, the lack of a clear definition of a green applications might be also a problem because a lot of uh, different terms are used for the energy saving applications, the gas emitting uh, um, um, products. So I think that having a clear definition for the different applications will also contribute uh, to uh, fostering such an environment. And now back to Natalia. Go ahead, Natalia. Thank you, Abira and Tahar. Um, as we see, like the, the different challenges that you have, the more impressive it is um, uh, to see that despite the context and, and the difficulties, barriers that you have, you are still on, on the way uh, developing your green strategy and even more no, understanding that there is work to do within your organization and as well work for your clients and um, developing the offer also in the regions that you're working with. Three more uh, aspects that we, want to, that we want to share with you today, takeaways from this webinar from FINDEF, uh, Gateway, having, um, br bringing to you the results of the study that was supported by Sanad um, Fund for for uh, Sanat Fund for MSMEs, the Technical Assistance Facility, we are going to talk about key support actions, recommendations for the sector, and outlook. In the key support actions, we have um, three main takeaways. Uh, if you go back one slide, the key support actions, uh, we have enabling the environment. Yes. Thank you. We have the enabling the environment. That means having um, different stakeholders working also, as Abir said, having regulators take a look to the needs um, of the financial service providers and also highlighting the role of the national microfinance networks that can be also multipliers in terms of awareness raising campaigns, training sessions, um, materials for the loan officers as well as for uh, institutions at management level and also be channel for uh, doing data collection on a regular on a regular uh, pace where this information can guide institutions how is what are the trends and um, what are the products that have been developed you can see examples of networks such as the red camif in nicaragua or networks such as main microfinance african institutions network that are already doing this type of activities then the second one uh, doing in, uh, doing the environmental strategy execution 
with uh, training and also advisory. These are services that um, Sanad is supporting also to microfinance institutions in the region and further working on the uh, product development. And for this is, is fundamental to have clear what is the data to um, collect and to work with having tools um, to have to do this data collection and also um, tracking the data and funding from investors and other parties that will support the development of the sectors. Let's go to the recommendations on the next, next slide. We have four recommendations for the sector. First one is the development of capacity building programs in partnership with the local and the regional microfinance networks. Most of the microfinance networks that we have discussed with are very keen, are interested, are looking forward to implement uh, programs as well as the regional microfinance network. We have started with the with a um, opening panel session at Sanabel Conference. We are here doing this webinar with FinDev and many more will come with the microfinance networks. So there is an opportunity to, um, to grasp the next to grab the next one is dissemination of digital tools and digital data management there are institutions that are in the process of digitizing their um their processes from from loan application also collecting the data from the clients but as well digitizing information on risk management um on what is happening within the institution and this is important in order to have good risk evaluation uh, uh, a uh, throwful um, demand assessment and as well being able to monitor the impact, which will be also important for the investors supporting these initiatives. The third recommendation, developing internal capacity for environmental risk management. In the short advisories that we are giving, we are also giving um, internal capacity building for their staff. It's important also for the institutions developing their environmental strategy to not forget um, uh, having all the institutions involved, we see um, from the leading microfinance institutions that when management is convinced and they are, they believe in the power of having better results on climate resilience for their clients, they also want all their employees in line with these objectives. So this is important to further develop their um, internal capabilities. And the last one, pro providing support to establish and mature microfinance institutions to grow their green portfolios. This does not mean that we have to, we don't care about the young ones or the small ones, but by further developing um, the results that the mature and established institutions already have, these lessons learned, their expertise will be key for the small microfinance institutions, for the ones that are already starting, that need to focus on sustainability, on their sustainability, and um, and as we have seen, it, once no, it's not only because of an environmental spirit, it's because of the business and the resiliency of the client, and making sure that they have a livelihood that will be able to succeed despite climate change, despite all the risks that they are facing day by day. And the last one, the last one, uh, before we have the, some few minutes for questions, the outlook that we have um, is, we have this, done this study, but there was no in-depth research on what is the potential of Islamic microfinance in the green inclusive finance, there is still much more to research. We need to understand also what is the financial performance of green financial products. I have seen also many of the questions are asking to the microfinance institutions, how, how are you doing? What are the conditions that you are managing? This is important for institutions to understand um, how is the performance and if it's a um, business case for them. Also, um, it is important to understand what are the measures for climate change adaptation, for climate change mitigation, how is the transition to low carbon economy, is there um, science behind that needs to be uh, further understood in order to understand what will be the practices to incorporate in the portfolios. And last but not least, 
there is more support needed or more research on developing cooperation with central banks for developing um, green inclusive finance policies. As, as we showed before, there are like these four, five Ps uh, of action and cooperation with the central banks will be clear, will be key and fundamental in order to put them and bring them to practice. So with this, Sahar, we have a very comprehensive webinar. Let's see now. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran, Your Natalia. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Taha. Thank you, Abir, for your interventions. Thank you for sharing your experience and the different uh, surveys and studies. Yes. One, one we can one summarize. Yes, yeah, Sahar, there is there is one announcement for the microfinance institutions. We're talking about this capacity building in terms of yes. energy access. Um, we are going to launch a series of webinars. Yes on the multidimensional impact of improved energy access with translation to Arabic. These are um, four sessions from Gogla, SMAP, NDEF, and UNCDF, four, um, four wonderful women that will share about their work specific for the microfinance sector and energy access sector. You can enter on this link and also on the QR code, we will be sharing more information through the FinDev gateway but this is part of, um, of bringing more awareness racing into this subject. Thank you very much. We will be sharing the presentation uh, on uh, the FINDEF website. Uh, the um, registered presentations will have uh, access to the entire presentation, including the dates of the upcoming sessions, and I hope that they would be useful to you all. Now back uh, to our uh, topic for today. Thank you all for your interventions. Thank you for sharing your expertise. And I can, uh, in a nutshell, say that uh, and uh, this study uh, provides us with a baseline. We can know where we stand now in terms of the uh, uh, green uh, financing in uh, North Africa and the Middle East and in the Arab countries. And in the future, we could be adding or comparing uh, with the baseline. We can uh, assess the evolution in uh, service uh, provisioning uh, for uh, the sustainable uh, green financing in the region. Uh, uh, from uh, Yemen, Jordan, uh, we've had uh, concrete examples, and it's clear that uh, the need uh, always uh, push, pushes towards um, the creation and the innovation, which uh, generated opportunities for different communities in the different regions. I have a question to Abir, if possible. Uh, this is a question from the audience. What is uh, the biggest advantage of uh, the uh, small uh, green uh, financing for the sake of development in the Middle East? Abir? The, uh, we still don't have uh, specific KPIs. So what is uh, the uh, positive uh, big indicator? Uh, OK, having. Um, uh, initiatives and involvement uh, of the government, the legislative and the regulatory authorities for green financing is the biggest indicator that uh, this is uh, the uh, target uh, that we should be aiming for because it has positive impact on the environment and as well as the social indicators when it comes to uh, this sector. And I believe that having such initiatives at the regional and local levels the evolution of such initiatives and having everyone on board uh, uh, clearly attests to uh, the importance uh, of being engaged in this field. And that is the greatest positive indicator. Thank you, Abir. One of the uh, findings shared by uh, Natalia highlights the fact that, that the most mature or the largest enterprises are the ones 
and that have um, uh, the capacity to get engaged in the green uh, financing. Taha, my a question to you: In your opinion, how can we encourage or motivate the uh, smaller enterprises, uh, small size enterprises, uh, in terms of uh, the financial resources or the presence and the visibility, how can we encourage them to start uh, benefiting from the uh, micro green financing uh, in, in the Arab world? Yes, uh, there uh, are uh, bank specific uh, products and uh, micro finance enterprises uh, specific. The, the opportunity is still there. There are uh, small enterprises and small businesses uh, on board, we have a specific product for small amounts. Uh, when it comes, for example, to enterprises and business owners who would like to have access to a small amount uh, uh, of funds. So we can sell products, we can be using uh, uh, financing for uh, small businesses because they do need that. There is need. Um, for instance, sometimes we have small supermarkets, uh, the small groceries, uh, which would uh, need uh, refrigerators, freezers, uh, which uh, can uh, operate uh, on uh, solar systems. So some products uh, could uh, be uh, developed uh, through uh, small enterprise support uh, programs. and. Uh, the, there was another question uh, that I saw in the chat uh, by Ala Adin. He was asking about the um, microfinance. It is a, a pretty much similar question. Uh, we have individual uh, financing, not collective financing, for uh, the small amounts uh, of funds. The problem lies with the maintenance for the solar system. How can we address the maintenance issue while uh, the amounts are very small? So when we uh, used to work on one single list uh, of uh, solar energy providers and the uh, green energy suppliers, the condition is that when there is a maintenance requirement the spare parts uh, requirement uh, that might affect the, the system, the supplier would be ready uh, to handle that and would provide maintenance work to such systems. So we tried uh, to uh, make it uh, accessible to the uh, small uh, uh, clients uh, so that they get support from the uh, green energy providers and suppliers. Thank you, Taha. Thank you for the questions uh, that you provided. Thank you very much. Let me end quickly with Natalia. Let me end quickly with Natalia about the future and the priorities for legislators. The role of legislators in encouraging uh, encouraging uh, such microfinance institutions to develop. How can we have this encouragement to better provision of green microfinance? So in terms of uh, incentives, incentives at the level of legislators. Yeah, well, the, I think the, the first aspect for legislators is to understand what are the conditions of the microfinance institutions uh, what are specifically the needs, such as microfinance institutions are understanding what are the needs of their clients. They need to understand the differences between being a commercial bank, as Abir said, or being a microfinance institution and working in parallel or at the same time with suppliers that can sell by cash or in cash or, um, or how to work with um, uh, academic institutions or with uh, researchers, with scientists or with development corporations that have other timing or have other type of budgets or have um, programs, constellations where microfinance institutions have difficulties to join in as part of a consortium or um, have a stake in deciding to what rules or to what conditions can they um, be part of this of these programs, so legislators can um, can understand can first not only have a stake in terms of developing incentives, but um, calling for action to all the institutions in in the region 
for those that have not yet started or for those that have started but are still um, having a look around how to uh, what will be the next innovation um, further developing with them promotion, collecting information with the local surveys. I think this step is, is good, the national, the regional survey that we have done, but local surveys, uh, how, what is exactly, where do you need support? Abir said, the support that we need in Jordan, in our particular institution is this one. In Sanabel, we heard the needs of small microfinance institutions in Egypt compared to the larger ones, which are very different. So understanding those, then um, and then having they have a, a full, yet yeah, not a, a a whiteboard for designing the project. They can work um, in prevention, in provision, in having protection, and not developing the different uh, products or uh, having support with GIZ with the World Bank that are uh, looking forward to further develop the product. So then. Um, having a more broader and international overview to not do this the same mistakes, but to um, grab from the lessons learned and uh, work from them in cooperation with other microfinance stakeholders. They are not alone. That's the message. They are not alone. There are institutions, investors, technical assistants looking forward to support. And it's only raise hands and, and engaging in these partnerships. Shukran, shukran, Natalia. Um, uh, Thank you very much, Natalia, for this response. Based on this discussion and given the enthusiasm, we see that uh, this same topic will also be discussed again from now until the end of the year to see what we have achieved and what we will manage to achieve in 2023 in terms of developing green microfinance, especially in the Arab countries. Thank you, everyone. Taha Skander from Al Quraimi Bank in Yemen, Abir Abwe from the Tamwilkum Company in Jordan, Natalia Carreo from Hedera Sustainable Solutions. Thank you, everyone. I also extend my thanks to the attendees, and I kindly ask Mr. Adi to also end this session with his final remarks. Thank you very much, Sahar. What next? This is the question to be an answered now. First, we ask you to dedicate one or two minutes to share with you your feedback um, by filling a quick questionnaire that will be available on your screen. We will also send you an email when the recording is ready and when all relevant material are available on the FINDEV website. For more information and for more resources on financial inclusion, kindly visit www.findevgateway.org slash AR. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter if you wish. You can also find available resources on cgap.org. Thank you again for being part of this webinar, and we hope to see you again in future webinars. Goodbye.